Hi friends, I'm Golda Rose and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm just going to go through a couple questions that you guys had posted in the community post. This originally was going to be like a couples Q&A, but just with our schedule and everything, I just decided since I wanted to get you guys those answers that I was just going to do it myself. So let's get started. I have my laptop with the questions. Um, if you guys see these stickers, they're super cute. I'll go ahead and link the girl um, down below. She's a small business. So so these stickers are done by Simply Stem Designs. I'll go ahead and link her Instagram account below. They're super cute. I got some of the mechanical engineering ones and then I have this like, even though I'm not, not into chem at all. So stay positive and like a little like coffee one, but she has a ton of sticker designs. There's like a computer science one, electrical engineering, all of the like STEM. I think she even has like nursing and things like that. So you guys should totally check it out. Not a sponsor. I just thought they're super cute and I like seeing them on my laptop case. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. This is just a friendly reminder to please give this video a thumbs up and go ahead and click the subscribe button so you can always see more of my videos. And if you guys have like more specific questions that you wanna ask, go ahead and put them down below in the comment section. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first question I saw was, what is your daily routine that could eventually make you meet your goals? So in the last video that I posted about getting ready for 2022, I kind of talked about, you know, how I make my schedule. And if you guys want, I can go ahead and make another video about that. But having a routine and having that daily schedule is super important to me. I want to make sure that throughout the day I am, you know, getting the work that I need to get done. I'm allotting time for class. I'm allotting time for like the gym and studying and church. So, um, besides that, like any of like my free time is spending time with friends and family or prepping for the following week. And so I really enjoy my free time, <laughs> but in terms of my daily routine and how that helps me reach my goals, I mean, when I have a goal, let's say last year, one of my goals was to get over a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I was really making sure that, you know, I was posting as much as I could. I was, you know, interacting with you guys in the comment section and how I like, did how that was part of my daily routine was planning out the content I was going to make, interacting with you guys, as I just said, staying up to date with like giving you guys updates in what I'm doing in my life. And so that's some things that I do. I feel like it depends on your goals too. If you have short-term goals versus long-term goals, obviously if I have a longer term goal, I might not be checking in on that every single day, but it's going to be like smaller increments to get me to that goal. And I guess another example would be, you know, prioritizing my health and fitness routine. And so going to the gym, ensuring that I'm eating good foods and counting macros, that's something that works for me. So I feel like that could be one example of how like my daily routine is structured to help me meet an end goal to like be at a certain weight or be at a certain physique. So that's another, <laughs> I guess, example of how I kind of do daily things uh, throughout the day, if that makes sense, that ultimately helped me get to that goal. So another example, I'll give you guys three examples, <laughs> is um, going to grad school. So one of my goals a few years ago was to apply to grad school, get into grad school. Now that I'm in grad school, I mean, I'm trying to think of like what I'm going to do with that degree and kind of like my five-year plan for my career. So that's just one option. And then doing well in my classes, obviously studying and paying attention during class and being involved uh, during my like courses throughout the week, I think it's really important as well. Okay, here is the second question. The second question says, how did what you did in college compare to your work experience? So this was actually asked to me in a DM on Instagram and I thought it was a really good question because I feel like I could also make like a whole video about this, but I'll just kind of answer it on here. And if you guys want me to talk about it more, I could definitely do that. So long story short, it is very different. So what I learned in college is different from what I personally do in my day job. And I, if you guys didn't know, I know in our couples Q and A last year, I'll link it up here, but we did mention that Darian was in the mechanical device industry as a process engineer. And this past year in 2021, he decided to make a change. He's currently a sales engineer. So you made that switch from like the medical device industry and now going into sales, um, not in the medical device industry, but more of like 
let's say control systems. So that's kind of what he's focusing on. And I asked him, since he couldn't be here, I asked him like, how, how, did it, how does it compare? And so he said that part of his job is around problem solving and articulating, you know, that technical side of a system to, you know, businesses and things like that. And so 40%, he said, was technical. 40% came from what he learned in school. And 60% is kind of that on the job industry training and really understanding like strategy for selling, um, kind of being in that business development section being taking that technical side but also that business side and meshing them together as a sales engineer so i thought it was really interesting to hear darian's approach to that kind of 40 60 40 being technical 60 being more focused on his uh, on the job training i would say for me i'm about 50 50 50 percent of what i do i learned in school um or kind of i take those key aspects from school and about another 50 percent is what i've learned on the job and when i'm mentioning school it's not it it is my undergraduate degree as well as what i'm currently working on in my graduate program so it kind of for me it's kind of a gray area too because part of what i've already learned through work is also what i'm learning in grad school so for me, it's either like 50, 50 or 60, 40 in terms of like probably use more from work than what I, I did in school. And another question that was kind of brought up when that question was asked was like, this person doesn't really like doing math and wanted to kind of know like, are you there doing differential equations all day? And so, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't. Ugh. The last time I did calculus honestly was in grad school. So I had, um, one class that made us do like what was it differentials and doing integrals and things like that but I do not use math on a day-to-day -day basis at work I do a lot with project management I look at systems I look at design so it really depends on what project I'm working on and how technical versus like more project management I'm taking on that project so it just depends on my roles so that being said these are just two points of views from people who are in the industry. So Darian being a sales engineer and me being a mechanical engineer. So that is just our opinion and what we do on a daily basis that doesn't apply to everyone. Some people could be, I mean, I if you look on LinkedIn and you look at open positions for different companies, they'll tell you what your job duties are. So like, let's say for one position, I recently saw it had to do a lot with MATLAB. So if you like MATLAB, that'd be a great position for you. If you don't like MATLAB, you probably don't wanna do that. And so um, it kind of leads me to my next question, which was giving a design engineer overview. So another position you can look at is design engineer. You could be designing electrical systems or cabling. You could be looking at different mechanical setups. Like it really depends. I feel like the design engineering industry is so big just because there are so many different design softwares. So like when I was in undergrad, I was a design engineer intern for an aerospace company. So my day-to-day -day tasking was solely around SolidWorks, updating drawings, making drawings, editing and revising drawings, and focusing on document management. I had a professor who did more cable and cable assembly designs, and that was his day-to-day. -day. So I think they I think they use SolidWorks, I'm not, I don't really remember. That's kind of, I mean, you can, you guys can totally search online. If you, I personally like to use LinkedIn and they, the position descriptions are all right there. There is no like, I don't really know what I'm gonna be doing. So if you see, like if you're in undergrad or you're even in graduate school, kind of trying to figure out what you wanna do, search LinkedIn. <laughs> that can kind of put you on a good path to see like, oh, I would really enjoy being a design engineer or, oh no, I don't wanna be working on CAD every day. I think it just depends on what you like to do. Like for me, I have some projects where I'm really focused on design, some projects where I'm more focused on, let's say, different types of documentation or analysis, and other times where I'm really just working with you know, that business side and project management, looking at the schedule and the budget. So it really depends. I feel like as a mechanical engineer, there's often that idea that you're just working on technical stuff, but a lot of the times you're gonna have to learn how everything kind of goes together. At least that's been my experience. And um, it's not always just what you learn in school. And so it's something to take into consideration, but of course you wanna totally prioritize all of your courses 
try as hard as you can to really understand everything because you might find that you're really passionate about something that you didn't think you would have been. So yeah, I hope that kind of gives you guys a summary of how like industry experience compares to school and um, specifically like your undergraduate um, college experience. Another question I got, which this is technically question four, was what would be the best way to approach uh, professors for a graduate assistant position? And I think this is a really great question. Now, um, if you guys have seen some of my other videos, I'll, I'll just give you guys a little background about myself. When I went into college, I had a job as a student assistant in one of the offices on campus. And it was very admin focused. And I got that position after just reading my emails. I applied, I saw an, or I saw an email and I applied. So that's kind of been my approach towards getting jobs on campus. Now, in terms of a graduate position, and I feel like this also applies to, you know, student positions, let's say you're in engineering, you wanna work with an engineering professor. You wanna do some research with them, um, paid or unpaid, totally up to you. So my approach would be to not just randomly walk up to a professor. I would say a big thing is establishing a relationship with that professor. Don't expect to talk to someone once and think you'll be able to get a job. I feel like it's really important to develop a relationship with people so that they can, you know, get to know you and see, hey, we would be a good fit to work together. When you're applying to positions on campus, it's a little different because they are probably not technical, to be honest. You could be working in the library, you could be working in mail, the mail room, you could really be working anywhere and that can be more like admin focused or tech support. So if you're really trying to work with a professor, make sure you get to know them, <laughs> establish a good relationship with them and just express like you'd be interested in working with them. You're, you're interested in their research, but be genuine, of course. Like if you know about their research and you're genuinely interested in it, go for it. I wouldn't suggest to just Go for something if you're not interested in it. If you need the money, then probably just look at another student position outside. Um, but I think it's really good to be passionate about what they're working on as well. And ultimately, like as a graduate student specifically, like that could help you on your thesis. You could, you know, take a part of that research and, and maybe go a different route or continue that research with that professor as your advisor. It's I mean, the possibilities are endless when you're looking at that technical degree program and really doing that thesis and research. I will add that you might be told no, like that person might not be looking for a student assistant um, or a graduate assistant and be okay with rejection. It's going to happen. It's not only going to happen in school, it's going to happen when you're applying for jobs and it's going to happen in work when you're actually there. So if someone says no, move on go find another path, go find a different professor, go find a different research kind of opportunity. Don't take that as, oh, I'm never gonna get, you know, a job or I'm never gonna do this. Like, don't take it to heart. If they do say no, you can always ask like, oh, is there any reason? It could be funding, to be honest. Like there's always funding issues sometimes. So if there's no funding and you don't mind working unpaid, you can always say, oh, is there a way that I could maybe just work with you unpaid? and and take like a an elective like use like a three unit or one unit course as your kind of like let's say free study i forgot i forget what they call it i'll put it right here i'll put the word right here i can't independent study that's what it is you can use that as independent study so it's technically going for a credit um, but you wouldn't get paid in that instance but that's only the case if you don't want to get paid like if you want to be an unpaid graduate assistant or graduate student um or student assistant I know I did that with one of my professors because I was really interested in like wind tunnel stuff. So that's one option if your university allows it. Um, or if you don't want to do any credit, then just offer offer your time. And I think that goes a long way. Um, so establishing a relationship, being okay with rejection, being passionate and genuine about the research or the job duties that you'll be doing. And then, um, you know, don't give up along the process. If you realize you guys aren't a good fit or you're not, you didn't think the research was going exactly how you thought, it's okay to say, you know, I've had, uh, I mean, be, be professional, of course, but it's okay to say, you know, like this has been such a great opportunity. Um, I'm really interested in like possibly also working with another professor. And so I'd really like to take the time to, you know, 
do that research, but it's been great. Let me know how it can like help in the future, but like to take a step back or like you need to focus on your school, whatever, however you want to transition that. If, I mean, professors are looking out for you guys and what's best for you. So I'm pretty sure they won't take it personally. Um, like I had an intern this past summer that I was mentoring at our company and um, she ended up, you know, getting a, her dream job after that. I didn't take it personally. I'm glad I could help you along the way. Of course, I would love for you to come work with us, but it is what it is. Like, congrats. Like, I'm here cheering you on. And I feel like when you establish that good rapport and that good, you know, relationship with professors and your peers and future bosses and coworkers, everyone should just be cheering for you. And they should just be looking out for like, what's best for you. Obviously you want to support the company and everything, but career development and that, that growth over time, everyone wants to see that in someone. So a long winded question and answer, but I hope that kind of makes sense to you guys. And then the last question or the fifth question I'll be answering today is what are the best YouTube channels and sites for mechanical engineers? And I'll just say for engineers in general, do a little drum roll, Google. <laughs> I know it's so funny, but honestly, Google what you need help in. Um, personally, for like textbooks and, and if you really need some extra help, I love Chegg, Quizlet. Those are really good. I know that Quizlet has kind of, you know, I mean, Quizlet, I would say, is is more for like the terms, terminology, if you have, you know, I know one of the courses we took was like human ethics. So some terms and things could be helpful in Quizlet. Chegg, you, you guys probably know, they have tons of solutions out there. They can really help you if you get stuck on a problem. I will include some links to some good um, engineering YouTube sites down below. I know I've talked about them in previous videos, but just so you guys know. And then other websites are like Wolfram Alpha is a really good like Mathematica kind of base site and honestly like YouTube you guys can YouTube everything and Google that would be kind of my main thing just in terms of like additional advice like I would always encourage you guys to ask questions to your professors that is why they're there they're there to support you they're there to teach you and help you grow so always ask questions I know sometimes it can be a little intimidating to either raise your hand if you're in class or unmute your mic and raise your hand virtually I know it can be intimidating but honestly and I've said this before like you could be asking a question that so many other people have and they'll be happy that you asked it they'll be happy that you spoke out and so a lot of the times we just need that extra motivation to go ask a question and professors are looking for that engagement they're looking for those questions and so um, that's one option obviously there's tutoring that you guys can do if your school offers it or if you just look online <laughs> and then um ask your classmates you know i really loved when i was in college working in like study groups and us studying for exams together and so that is another option but yeah don't be afraid to ask questions don't be afraid to google something obviously we don't want any cheating <laughs> don't don't take this as a it's okay to cheat thing obviously follow your university and school rules and guidance for all of that but everything is Googleable, if that's a word. <laughs> but yeah, search engines are great. Um, there's YouTube that's great. And go ahead and check the description box below for some additional kind of resources for you guys. Well, that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really wanted to focus on the questions that you guys had asked. So if you guys haven't already, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see more of my videos. And if you really, really want to, go ahead and hit that notification bell so that you always know when I post. Well, I just appreciate all of you guys. Thank you guys for watching if you have watched all the way to the end. And again, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comment box and I will see you guys in the next video.